Hello, I'm going to try to make this as uh, quick as I possibly can. Um, I've uh, been taking some Python courses. Uh, one such great course is this one right here in Udemy called REST APIs with Flask and Python. Uh, when you finish this particular course, if you choose to go further with your studies, uh, which is highly recommended and all that, just to learn how to do more real world uh, Python API development. Um, the author has a follow-up course, which is called Advanced REST APIs with Flask and Python. Excellent course, both of them actually. Um, it'll take you quite a bit of time to complete, but it's well worth it. And once you complete it, you'll be definitely ready for real-world applications development. Um, and basically, what I wanted to let you know was in this advanced REST course, Cutting Through the Chase, um, he has an excellent section on OAuth, third-party uh, authentication and all that. I did want to mention that um, this content right here is, is, is slightly outdated because he's using Flask OAuth Lib. And if you go to like, for the most part, um, these sections right here, uh, you'll find out that, you know, Flask OAuth Lib is actually deprecated. If you go to their homepage right there, they'll basically tell you that you need to use a different library instead. So that would be the OAuth lib. And one second right here. So here's the homepage. So here's the OAuth, or here's that auth lib right here. So ideally what you're gonna have to do then is because he has not updated the course yet, you're going to have to uh, replace the content of um, in his examples um, for those sections right there that I outlined, which uh, one second right here. Um, these right here where you're using, uh, let me update this basically because I already finished those sections. Um, from like 104 on down to 108, you'll have to replace it. Uh, with the new code. So I'm just going to show you what I did and hopefully this will save you some time until the author has a chance to finish um, updating the course to use a new library. So the first thing, and by the way, this is just how I did it. It doesn't mean that this is the right way to do it. So the first thing is in your project, um, if you go to the pip file, uh, go ahead and install the, um, the auth lib right there. So you'll have to update your pip file right there. And then you can just do run your pip env update com command at that time. And it'll go ahead and install everything there. And the oa.python file um, initially that we have right up here, which is in the uh, OAuth2 directory. I'm having a hard time. Clicked right on it. So forget about actually the what they have in the uh, in the videos right here you'll need to do something like this and you can look on the documentation for that link but for the most part take your client id or take your uh, github consumer key it's an environment variable i won't show you mine um pretty much just just do this right here and the next step that you'll need to do is um, go to your, let's see here, GitHub login. And there's a couple of things that you'll need to do right here. So if you could just kind of take a look at, at what I've done here, you won't need to use G in this case. So what you can do is um, right here in the GitHub authorize, um, go ahead and replace uh, the, co the code that you see in the video with this right here. And this OAuth is basically importing from OA. And that's what this OAuth object is right there. So let's see what we've got here. This, for the most part, I don't think is really needed. I was kind of taking a look at the documentation. And for the most part, um, it did not say what this that this would return a none but it does return the token. So just to be on the safe side, to conform with um, uh, the original course, I'm just trying to make sure, you know, that we have a valid token. But literally by the time you get to this authorize here, 
you should have been redirected from your GitHub with the actual authorization code um, and the proper token at that time. So you should be authorized by the time you get in here. So technically this should always return you a valid token. I don't honestly see this, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't honestly see this case ever being hit, but it's here just you know, for brevity purposes. Uh, might be best just maybe not to have it in there um, and let it crash if you're playing around or experimenting just to see if it ever would happen. And then this code here is gonna look a little bit new. Again, there might be a better way to do this, but here I'm interrogating the user object right here and I can actually show you in the debugger session what happens. Then I get the username, do this right here on the model, go ahead and get the user object, uh, save that to the DB and then go ahead and return your token. So what I'm gonna do here is I wanted to show you this. When you're testing, now what I did was I did a screenshot here to my GitHub account because we're using GitHub as our uh, authentication provider. Uh, when you go to your settings and your um, applications and you see your OAuth apps, you're actually gonna see a client ID and a client secret. I actually erased it right here because I just didn't want to expose that for the video. But when you're testing, like if you log in and you want your token to expire and test out, um, you know, going back to your authentication page again where you get your prompt, go ahead and go to this page and you can click on this revoke all user tokens button and that will basically clear out the uh, token over on your provider side. In this case, it's uh, GitHub. So having said that, so here I am in my, uh, my GitHub repo. So, you know, basically go to your uh, settings down here and then go to your developer settings that you'll see right there. And then you can go to your OAuth apps. And here I have it uh, testing OAuth login. So if you click on that, it'll basically bring you to this section right here. And like I said, I don't really want to expose the key, but go ahead and revoke all of your user tokens at that time. So as you can see, I'm, I got an old test right here. So I just re revoked my user token. So I'm going to go ahead and um, refresh my page again. And actually, you know what I really want to do before I do that, kind of want to show you a trick. Um, we're going to start up the application. So we're using PIP ENV which I think is really pretty darn cool. So I've started up the application right here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start the debugger. This is a Visual Studio code. I'm gonna go and attach using process ID, find my Python one. It's basically this one right here. And so now I've got, I've basically attached to my debugger. Okay, so now I'm ready to go ahead and clear this out. And I'm refreshing the page. As you can see, I've hit a breakpoint. So I am going to my GitHub login resource. And step next, as you can see, the redirect URL using the URL four is gonna return that. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the continue at that time right here. And what you'll see happens is you go to your login page right here. <clears throat> so this is where you can consent your, you know, give consent for your application right here. So I'm going to just say, go ahead and authorize me. And right now it's redirecting to the application. So it's hit my breakpoint. And now we go to the authorize endpoint. And here's where you can get the access token. Now here you can see here's our token and here's the scope. So we want the user and the email. Make sure we get that. It's a bearer token. And if you take a look here, you can see we're getting our response. So we're getting all of our good stuff. There's my user ID. Um, there's my user, my email object. Now I'm actually hitting the database, saving that to the database, getting my access and refresh tokens. And POW, right here, if we go and take a look at it, this part right here looks good. So now continuing the test, I'm gonna go ahead and take that token, go to my postman, and I am going to 
update my password. Um, so I am going to go to the, let's see what we got here. Uh, post actually, if we go to the login, one second here, let me see if this will let me log in. Okay, so we've got invalid credentials. Okay, I forgot to do something here. Um, so we got the invalid credential. That's because I've been kind of playing around with it. Um, actually, I've have I have records in my database already. This data.bdb, which is a SQLite database. So what I want to actually do is um, set a totally different password. Let's see here. I'll just call it. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And no, I would never use that as my password. Uh, I'll just even use password. This is all local. So I'm gonna delete my database after this, doesn't really matter, but I'll just call it like password one. Everybody uses that. Uh, so what you wanna do is go to your headers right here. Make sure, and I did that too. Make sure this token, right here agrees with this particular bearer token right there and so what i am going to do is update it to password one and i have a breakpoint so as you can see i'm already authenticated so i'm going to the you know the set password right there as you can see we've got our user json and our user data and we're saving to the database and we've updated the password, we get a 201. So now I'm going to try to log in with uh, 201 right here. I'm sorry, with password one. So I just go to the login right there, click on it, and as you can see, we've got our access token. So everything works. So anyhow, I hope this helps. Um, I kind of, I know I realized I went through this awfully fast. Uh, not really all that much that you had to do um, down here. As a matter of fact, um, I think I got a residual uh, OA thing here. Actually, I don't. Um, so right here in this OAuth right here, actually, uh, bear with me one second. I just kind of want to make sure. Uh, yes. So here's the import that we need. So if you go to the OA, so I've created the OAuth object right here. And in my app.py, um, I'm basically importing that. And down right here in the SIF statement, making sure that I call oauth.initapp. And if you want to print out your uh, client ID and stuff like that, I have mine hidden in my environment file, so I won't reveal that. Um, you can go ahead and do a uh, print there. I hope this helps. And by the way, you know, I just wanted to mention that this is a great course. There's a lot of great courses out there in Udeme. And, um, you know, really, if you're looking for a, a real world course, um, this basically is right on target with it. So, I can't say enough good things about it. So thank you for watching and listening, and I hope this helps. Take care. Bye.